Acknowledged. Thank you. Promise not to kill squirrels. Is that the squirrel? No, that I don't know. <laughs> it's a squirrel. But it's not the squirrel. No. Yeah, that'd be a I poor think, taste. God, I hope I don't kill a squirrel on this trip. That's yeah, like, that would be bad for probably me. Yeah. Wow, mine was way more graceful than yours. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'll go. I can sit in the middle. Yeah. I think it's probably the best. I sit in compact spaces. So, welcome to the world's largest telescope the Large Binocular Telescope. So the Large Binocular Telescope is largest in terms of mass and aperture. We're the only telescope on the planet that has uh, two eight meter mirrors on the same mount, which gives us an aperture of 24, uh, 23 meters interferometry and 11.8 combined. Combined. And then the mass of our telescope is uh, 700 tons, um, which I understand is greater than the combined mass of both Keck telescopes. 300 tons a piece, so. Yes, uh -huh, the world's okay. largest telescope. <laughs> the world's largest. <laughs> this is the actual bell jar. And so this is attached to the dummy cell just like it would be attached to the telescope. Then the entire bell jar is staged right in this location. And then the crane from the enclosure is lowered down, the hook is lowered down, and we pull the bell jar up through this hatch. It's then made it to the telescope, the vacuum is drawn, we flash the cleaned mirror, and that's how we re -illuminize. This is where the seal is made. Um, there's an identical flange on the bell jar that has a groove cut in it and an O-ring that makes the vacuum seal. The other part of the process is this what we call the spigato. Um, it seals between the top clean side of the mirror and the dirty bottom side of the mirror. The idea is behind the mirror it's not quite as clean as the top and you don't want the contaminants to mess up the coating when we flash a new coating on the mirror. So this is actually half of our coating chamber. The other half is actually the mirror cell. It's part of the telescope. It's part of the telescope. And then whatever it is you want to coat with, in our case aluminum, you vaporize it really hot turns into a vapor and it sticks to everything. It has to be very clean to stick, so that's why you clean it. But it has to be a vacuum so that it just goes everywhere um, and it's not contaminated. And so this is the pumping equipment that removes the atmosphere. So there, there's this principle where you want a nice even distribution of the vapor. Um, you don't want to test that on the mirror all the time. So in, in, in this dummy cell, we have um, a structure that we can put witness sample glass everywhere and then we could perform an aluminizing right here, open it up and test those witness samples and see how even it is all around the whole surface. You know, it's done quite frequently in almost every optics house on the planet, just not to this scale. Right, I mean. Normally you order optics this big and they're done in a bell jar this big. And, you but know, you come to the largest telescope in the world and you get the largest this. <laughs> So, so our, one of our biggest advantages is we can reconfigure the telescope uh, within 20 minutes or less, depending on what configuration. I would venture to say most telescopes, it takes on the order of a day to two days. So when I worked on UKIRT, you had to basically take an instrument off, put an instrument on, and it was a full day's job. Uh, Keck can do it uh, probably within the same amount of time that we can, but they require a crew uh, to be on site to do that. And that really um, becomes difficult in you know, having somebody standing by all night long. That's where our advantage kicks in, is that we don't need anybody except somebody on a computer going click, click, click and then the arms can reconfigure to whatever configuration we want. It really gives us an edge in the astronomy world.
the bogey level is uh, not these unidentified flying objects or identified flying objects. This is the bogey wheels that uh, support the building structure as it rotates. So there's four uh, bogey stations. Uh, you're looking at one of them, and this is the six wheel station. There's two six wheel, there's two four wheel. Um, these stations, all four, are supporting about 2,000 tons. What I was saying was that these motors that you see on these bogey stations are slaves to the telescope. So the telescope will look, will be tracking an object, and the telescope will be telling these motors, follow me. And so as the telescope rotates, the building follows the, the telescope, and then there's a two degree error that, that can happen in. If it goes outside of that two degree limit, it hits a hard stop and then hits limit switches and everything shuts off. Yeah, so there's a wrap. It's what we call an, an azimuth wrap. And so there's these cables that wrap up as you go one direction and then you go so far you can't go anymore. Then you have to unwrap that wrap. So it's conceivable you can go to an object and be all the way to the limits of the wrap. And now you gotta stop, you gotta unwrap everything and go back where you were so you can, and that's a lost time. So you really try hard not to let that happen. So good observers will then check with the TO, like, we're going here, are we okay? Like, and they'll say, yes, you're good for six hours. Or, no, when we get there, you've got 10 minutes, so we're gonna unwrap first, and then you can set up on your target. Time, time is, is everything here. It's, it's not money, it's photons right, that we're trying to collect. So, oh yeah, the, the, these things will be humming, and sometimes they're moving so slow that um, it's like, have you ever watched the sunset? And you, you watch it and it just moves so slow you can't see it moving. Right. You look away and you look back and it's moved. That's what these do. They move that slow and that accurately. You know. And to me that's what's amazing. I mean that's 2,000 tons. It's just you know creeping along at, at some very accurate rate to keep the telescope where it needs to be. Well, so that it doesn't block the telescope where the telescope is. And of course the telescope's doing the same thing. It's 700 tons. This is awesome. That's awesome. That looks awesome. Dude, the purple and the blue and then the white and the green just looks awesome, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That purple and pink back there looks fake. It looks fantastic, dude. It really does, though. It really does. Look at the sunset.